Hello everyone and welcome to the next video on this 12 hip roof. Hopefully this is going to be the last video showing me actually framing up the roof. What I've got to do today is get my head around putting a hip over this flat top triple girder. Should be fairly straightforward. Um, I can't really explain it as I hinted in the last video, but uh, there should be a diminishing a set of trusses that go in here. But unfortunately, the way that they've been manufactured, the diminishing truss obviously is set. You, you can't alter it. It's got the ridge height and that's where it goes. And the diminishing truss sits too far towards the end of the hip end and consequently is outside the line of the hip. I haven't even bothered uh, getting in contact with the truss manufacturer because it's just too much aggro. What I've done is uh, had a word with my excellent local timber merchants last night and they've re-sawn me down some two inch, uh, two by six, six by two, to 35 mil so I'm basically going to do all I'm going to do is put some labels in there and a ridge through myself so I can hand cut it I'll quickly show you around here um, I know I mentioned it in the last video but I didn't show it just because I wanted to crack on I've actually infilled you can see here uh, these are diminishing trusses of infilled this small bit here I've got one two three pretty simple stuff all I really did I don't know if you can see that is put a line all the way through to get my level and then um, it's a simple case of, hang on, just climb up here. Then it's a simple case of just lining the top of those diminishing trusses in with the center line, which is that string line. And then all I've done here to make it easier, just tack some four by one onto the top of these um, trusses here. And then literally you just pull the truss down until it hits that, um, the edge of that hip, which is obviously in the roof line. So uh, that's pretty much it. The other end obviously goes where it goes. There's nothing you can do about that. These trusses aren't particularly good, so I've got the better side. And um, obviously I've made it, if you can just pan down here, you can see that I've made the better side. Uh, this is going to be, um, this roof runs all the way through, so obviously I've made this side the best side. Um, the One of these trusses, one of these diminishing trusses isn't great, and it does kick a little bit, but that'll be down the valley. Hopefully you won't see that. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to get some set, stuff set up. Um, I've put a couple of marks in, usually again what we do here, um, the measurement between, uh, where's my finger, the measurement between um, that plate and this plate is 4 metres and 40, obviously I've split that in half, which is 2 metres and 20, took off half the material of the rafter and that's my measurement here. So that gives you an idea, when I get those labels up there, that is basically where my first set of commons are going to be. They won't be commons because they'll be jack rafters, but they'll basically be the same as hip commons and then my end king or I don't know whatever you want to call it a common rafter comes onto that and then the hips will strike from it as I said earlier the problem we had was the diminishing truss sat out here somewhere uh, so it just wouldn't have worked but anyway I'm going to set a camera up and get on I'll just quickly show you what I've done so far. Uh, it might be helpful. Um, so what I've done here, this post here, is uh, exactly the same height from the bottom cord to the ridge. And basically all I did, pretty simple, is just measured it off this side. So it's from the bottom cord of, the, of this truss to the top. It's not actually right to the point, it's to the point where it's down slightly because that's where the, um, the ridge board is. So basically what I did there is pretty simple. Trying to find a point to work from is, is, is the key here. Then I've got my central line, uh, obviously split this hip end in half, so that's where the end common raft will go. And I've upright, I put that dead upright, uh, and then I've fixed the ridge board to the side of it. So now that ridge board is in exactly the right place. The other thing I did, uh, I'll just get up here. Uh, oh. The other thing I did is I pinged the line, I pulled the line right the way from the other end down here. It helped me to uh, get this hip nailed into the right, sorry, it helped me to get this ridge nailed into the right place on the hip. So now you might be able to see, you might not. Obviously I put this little block on top of here because it just held this up on top of this uh, post that I put here. So we know now that that ridge is, uh, it's got a slight bow in it, but I'll pull that out obviously when I put my jacks in. We now know that that ridge is exactly the right place centrally and it's level, which basically means, hang on, let's get down here. 
which basically means now we can start to get a point to work sort of from in regards to our hips. So the first thing I'm going to do now is set myself up a rafter um, using this measurement. Obviously, we can just apply that to a rafter table and now I can get myself an end common rafter, which I can basically just hook on. I'm going to probably put a bit of extra 35 mil now, a bit of 35 mil material on top of here, because as I said earlier, um, there's no bird's mouth in this timber and it's going to really help to have a bird's mouth. And then I can just, once I cut that rafter, I can then just lean that up where it strikes, where it hits that ridge board there will be the point where I can put my two common, well, there will be jack rafters, but I can put my two commons up, nail those and I can cut that off, put this end one in and then we're rolling and we've got our points to fit our hips to. So as I said, look, I've cut this common rafter, fairly simple stuff. Um, I just put a bit of extra 35 minutes so I can use a bird's mouth because it really helps, you know, to set this up. If that was just floating, it would make it more difficult, you know, because it's obviously just the other ones are just pinned to the joists that come through. So, uh, so yeah, I've set that rafter up. Um, just, just as I said, just calculated half the span here and did the. Uh, there's a, a denominator that you times it by uh, according to the pitch, and I've laid it up the side of this uh, ridge board here, you see, and then there's my mark there. So basically what I can do now is I can get these lay boards in here and then I can put a pair of jack rafters down from the ridge down onto the lay boards here. Then I can, then that'll support this ridge here. Then I can cut that, put that end common in, and then we're laughing. We then just got to strike these hips. I don't know if these hips are gonna to have to be bird's mouthed over this uh, girder here, but I'm not so worried about that. Hopefully it's gonna work because that rafter seems like that works through there. So yeah, brilliant, it's working okay. A little bit of head scratching, but just look at it logically and it kind of, as long as you've got a reasonable grasp of how things work, it's, it'll come to you if you uh, think about it for long enough. So there we go. I don't know who it was who said, a thing of true beauty is a joy to behold forever, but this is beautiful and hopefully it'll be here for long after I'm gone. Uh, really happy with how that's gone. Um, so I'll just quickly talk you through. I know I've uh, spoken about most of it already. Um, obviously birds mouth this over an extra bit of 35 mil on there because that holds it nice and steady. Um, this is the correct pitch of the roof, obviously, and where it meets at the top there now, you see, we sort of had to project some lines to start with and you'll see I, I run that ridge through and, and once I've got these jacks up in the right place, um, I'll be able to cut all that off. Yeah, as we look up there, you can see that uh, this, this would be the last set of commons, but obviously they're jack rafters now. They're all in the right place. Everything's lining through uh, really, really nicely. I'm really happy. So um, I'll infill the rest of this with jack rafters, uh, infill the rest of this with jack rafters, and then it's a simple case of lining these hips through again and might have to bird's mouth them over that flat section of that girder I don't know but once these hips are in then we can infill a lot the rest of this and then that's pretty much that job done so yeah really happy I'm gonna have a sandwich now it's 10 o'clock I'm just cutting these uh, bird's mouth on these hips and I just wanted to show how easy it is uh, using this uh, Essential Carpenter Tools uh, Ultimate Roofing Square. So basically all, all I've done here, I've got my, this is my hip plumb cut and then we mark down from the top here. My height above plate is 125 mil. So literally measure down 125 mil to this point here. You can see here that this square is already set on the hip gauge, already set to 35 degrees, which is our pitch. Uh, that's on the hip scale, as I said. And then it really is a simple case of putting that up. Hang on, I'll try and do this one handy look. Putting it up against the, uh, the plumb line there, look. And then we just slide down this uh, seat cut part until it hits that 
that mark there, look. Oh, try and do it one-handed. Can you see that? Hopefully, tighten that off. And then basically what that gives us is wherever you put it, that gives us our um, bird's mouth. So simply what I've done, my measurement, I can't remember what it was, but my measurement comes from this corner. I've taken the measurement from obviously the corner where the rafters are down to the plate. Um, I hook my tape in a little nick I've made there and I bring that all the way down to here and make a little tiny sort of arcing mark along the measurement. And then all I've got to do, bring this square down, look, absolutely fantastic. Just bring the square down until this line is in the center. Uh, sorry, bring the line down until it, where these two parts meet, look. And that is the corner of the bird's mouth. And then hopefully without jogging it, put a mark there and a mark there, look. Boom, done. That's my bird's mouth. And that's set now, and every hip I do, and I've done them all, and I should have showed it earlier, but every hip I do now, that's set for the hip. Obviously, there hasn't been any bird's mouth on here, so I haven't been able to use it for my bird's mouth, but if you were doing bird's mouthing, you know, on a more traditional roof, exactly the same. Makes it really, really easy for cutting repetitive bird's mouth. Fabulous little bit of kit. Just quickly show you what I'm doing to help cut this hip over this flat section of this girder here. What I've done, because obviously it interferes, uh, what I've done is I've jacked up, I've cut my plum uh, bird's mouth there obviously, and I've jacked it up two thicknesses of this, which is 65 mil. And then as we come up to the top here, I've put a mark down from the top because we put it up 65 mil, so that's fitting nicely. And then what I've done is I've cut a piece of timber here, 65 mil, so simply all I'll do now, is lay that 65 mil timber on top of that girder look and that will be the line of the seat cut that will be the line of the seat cut so we know uh, i've just got to straighten it down it's a little bit i don't know if you can look down there look it's a little bit wonky so the key is going to be getting this splay cut in the right place but we know that um, that's going to be the seat cut and then when the whole thing drops down that 65 mil we know that because that's 65 mil that's going to sit nicely on there so just a little easy way of getting that cut, cut over this girder. You can see, look, um, it's, not, it's not fully nailed up yet because I've got to try and nail it at the top here then push that bow out a little bit. But you can see, look, how that's gonna fit down there nice. And that's just got a tiny bit more to drop there, look. So uh, I've got to nail it at the bottom, nail it at the top, and then just push that over a bit to straighten that out. But that's got that, you, you get the gist. That's just enabled me to easily cut that down over that girder. That's it, all the hips are in. That's that last end done. Really happy with how that's gone. Really glad I ended up hand cutting it. I kind of had to really because the trusses were all over the place. Yeah, I've got some lovely joints, everything sort of, let me show you everything. Neat and tidy, where it needs to be. Uh, sitting down this, everything's sitting down nicely over that girder. We've got, if you can just see, we've got a nice, I hope you can see that, nice plane down through here. We've got a nice plane down through here. 
Beautiful, it's really nice to look at that. And the biggest one is, here comes the money shot. Um, as we look down here, you see, I'll try and get it, look, can you just see how all of that comes in together? So I'll quickly show you um, the line. Uh, we've got a, a triple, we've got quite a lot going on here. We've got a triple girder there, we've got a jack rafter there, we've got a layboard there, a hip there, and another jack rafter there. If I put this bit of straight edge across, it's just a bit of timber, look. You can see, hopefully you can see that, uh, how they're all in that lovely line together, look. So really happy with how that's all gone. Superb. Technically it's kind of three or four roofs, isn't it? We've got a sort of little hip roof this end. Then we've got a bit of infill here. Then we've got a hip end here. Then we've got some diminished trusses there. Then we've got some more trusses on the end there. Then we've got a hip on that end. So it's quite a lot. If you think you've got like what, a hip one, two, three, four, five. There's like six sort of separate entities there um, to make that flank. And obviously our, this, this is the reward for me. Look, when you look down there, when you look here, you think, oh, look, it looks all over the place. But as you come in, as you come in, look, you can just see it all comes into the right line. So you've got the high, um, so it all comes into the right line. You've got the hip coming down there and the, the valley trusses. I've said it all before, I'm repeating myself. So really, really happy with that. Um, so in terms of jobs to do. I'm not going to show any more jobs on this. So just housekeeping stuff really. I've got to put some, let me show you here, sorry. Uh, down here I've just got to put some four worn underneath these diminishing trusses to stop them technically sliding down the roof. I've got some, um, just here look you'll see, I've got some uh, odd joist uh, hangers that are missing and there's some extra nails to put in. I've obviously got um, truss clips to put on, plates to put on. Um, I'm going to board out, if I just come around here I can show you that. I've got to board out the valleys to take the valley tray and just a general kind of whiz round, make sure that all of the doubles and triples are all super nailed up. I nailed most of them, but there's a few that aren't, so I'm just going to have a, have a sort of a whiz round. And we've just got these uh, four low trusses here. I had a word with the roofer and he seemed pretty relaxed about it. He's got some slip buttons he said he could just chuck on there, so that's a job that I haven't got to do, which is great. I won't film too much more of this because I don't think it's going to be that interesting. Um, if you've watched all these videos, thank you very much. And you made it to the end of this one, thank you very much. I hope you found it interesting. Um, it's been a cracking job and I know that I might have moaned uh, to start with, but I wasn't so much moaning about the problems because ultimately problems is, is kind of... It's, while the going's good, it's fine. You know, everyone can do everything when it's going straight forward. But when there's a problem, that's when you've got to kick in and maybe start earning your money. I love problem solving. The only thing that frustrates me is when you just stood around because other people aren't helping you solve these problems. So, you know, the little bits and bobs that haven't gone quite right here, it all adds a bit of sort of flavor to the mix, doesn't it? It's just when it costs you or someone else money. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Uh, the only other job I've got to do apart from what I just said was the soffit and fascia, and I'm gonna do that in a completely separate video. So, hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching.